What's up everyone? So I've been asked quite a bit to make a follow-up video to my $25 gaming PC. Now at first I did not really want to do that because the only reason why that PC was 25 bucks was because I lucked out on the power supply. And so I decided that if I do make a follow-up to this $25 gaming PC video, then I should probably spend money on all of the parts that I get. So that's precisely what I did. But instead of $25, I was able to cut it down to $22 for this gaming PC or PC that's capable to play a few games. So let's get right into it. So the base of this PC is a Dell Optiplex 780 that I scored for 30 bucks on eBay. Now this is a pretty nice deal. It comes with a Core 2 Duo E8400 clocked at 3.0 gigahertz and four gigs of DDR3 uh, memory clocked at 1333 megahertz and a 300 watt power supply. Now gaming on this guy was pretty much impossible without some kind of dedicated graphics. So I picked up a 6570 from AMD, one gigabyte DDR3 for about 15 bucks on eBay and popped it in there. Boom, gaming PC. So right now I'm sitting at $45 spent on this PC, which is almost double the $25 threshold that I had for this gaming PC. Now to make up for it, I took out the DVD drive and a SATA cable and I sold it for 26 bucks. And after all of that, I also bought a hard drive, a 120 gigabyte SATA one for $3. After everything is said and done, I spent technically 48 bucks but in reality i spent 22 dollars because i sold off the dvd drive and that sata cable so with all of that said and done let's see how this computer runs popular games so basically i started off pretty light with the titles and then worked my way up to more intense games the very first game that i chose was left 4 dead 2 and i played it at 1920 by 1080. now the settings i used very high shaders medium effects and high textures the minimum was 28 and the average was 39.12 now this was a very fun game to play and i can consistently stayed above 30 FPS except for when there were a ton of zombies fighting and explosions on screen. Even then, it was very stable and I only got very almost unnoticeable dips to below 30. The next game I tested was League of Legends at 1920 by 1080 at the maximum settings. Now the minimum was 74 and the average was 87.48. I'm not too surprised as LOL it can pretty much run on a potato if you allow it to. And basically the smoothest game out of all all the games that I tested, very fun, easy to play, no noticeable dips or drops, just a great experience overall. Next up is Rocket League at 1920 by 1080 at medium quality settings with motion blur, bloom, and flares off. I got a minimum of 38 FPS and an average of 48.63. Now this was pretty buttery smooth and I'm pretty sure that's because of the lack of major dips or drops or spikes in gameplay. As you can see, the minimum is 38 and the average is 43.63, so it pretty much stayed in that range the entire time. I had very smooth gameplay and it felt very fluid overall. Next up we have Minecraft, one of the biggest sandbox games of this generation. Uh, at fancy settings, full screen using the four trunk render settings, I was able to get a minimum of 62 and an average of 116.8. Now it ran very well with minor dips here and there, but I never went under 60 FPS. There were some weird graphical glitches and like things loading in at the wrong time or not loading in quickly enough. And I blame that mostly due to the dual core and only four gigs of RAM. After Minecraft came Smite, I pretty much played this at maximum settings minus anti-aliasing and I played it at 1920 by 1080p at full screen. Now the minimum was 24 and the average was 34.15. It was not as smooth as Minecraft or Left 4 Dead 2, but it was still a pleasure to play as I got no major lag spikes and it didn't really hinder my gameplay ability whatsoever. The next game I tested is one of the biggest games of this year, Blizzard's Overwatch. I was able to play it at 1080p, but I had to put everything on the lowest settings possible. Now, doing so, I got a minimum of 19 and an average of 35.85. There were huge dips in large team fights, but it was very playable overall. I didn't feel like I was at a big disadvantage when I played online with other people, but just be wary of those huge lag spikes whenever you get into huge team fights. The second to last game I tested is The Forest. Now this game is in alpha, so it's not as optimized as it should be, but it's still a decent game to test because it does push pretty much every single component in your computer. Now at 1280 by 720p, at the lowest settings possible, I got an average of 30.75 and a minimum of zero. Now there were huge lag spikes ever so often, but it was still playable. Not the most enjoyable experience, but it held up even in fight scenes. 
Last but certainly not least, one of the biggest games released in the last two years, GTA 5. Now, this game was playable at 1280x720p at normal settings. I got an overall minimum of 4.2 and an average after a five test run of 40.39. Now, big explosions caused dips into the high 20s, but it maintained mid to high 30s during most of gameplay. Graphical fidelity was not the best, but the playability was still there. Now, there were some glitches as I expected when using a dual core, as some things were not loading properly and there were some, uh, there was like lag when it came to sound effects and music loading and, th and just basic things like that that you get from not having the cores there. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this $22 gaming PC than I am with my last $25 gaming PC for an assortment of reasons. Firstly, I paid for every single component in this computer. Secondly, this whole thing runs on only 200 watts, which is pretty efficient considering that it's pretty old architecture. And thirdly, it plays AAA titles better than I expected personally. So overall, I think it's a win for this little computer. And considering this video went so well, I am probably gonna tread the waters a bit more in cheap budget gaming, because honestly, who knows, I might be able to pull out a $10 gaming computer at some point if I can get some pretty sweet deals. All right guys, so that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then definitely leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe because I have more videos like this coming out soon. I hope all of you are having a wonderful winter and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.